It's rolling. Oh, it is now? Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, this is Eric. I wanted to show you a couple of things. One is the sword that I mentioned in the previous video that Colonel Dad and I worked on. The other is this beautiful buckler that my mom painted. So, let me get to the sword first, then we'll look at the buckler. So this sword, um, as you know, my dad and I love to assemble sword pieces into new weapons. And I've long been a fan of the French Chaspeau Yadagon bayonet. Sword bayonet. It's a rifle bayonet, but they call it a sword bayonet because it's really long, as you can see. And for my money, the Chaspeau blade is one of the best short sword blades that you can repurpose of all, you know, cheap and readily available short sword blades. And even though the Chaspeau Yadagon sword bayonet is technically an antique, they made so many of them that you can get these for 60, 70 bucks, easy. Um, and they, even though the blade is like universally loved, it's just very well balanced and lightweight. It's got a T cross section, which I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but essentially it's got a wide flat spine on the back, which gives it rigidity along its length. So it does not want to bend at all. It makes for an excellent piercer. Um, it's not the greatest for cutting, but because it is a Yadagon shape, and it's got a false edge on the tip, so the last six or seven inches has no tee back, you can get really good tip cuts. So, the only downside to the Chaspeau Yadagon bayonet is the handle. Anybody that's ever held one knows it's got a, a pretty heavy brass handle with a really uncomfortable um, groove along the back that is primarily meant for the bayonet lug on the rifle to slide into, not for someone to use it as a long-term hand-to-hand option. So I've been replacing the handles and upgrading the handles. Um, I believe you guys maybe have seen one of these. I've got another one to show you. But this one, Colonel Dad and I just recently finished. So it is the blade from a Chaspeau Yadagon bayonet, which I believe is 22 and a half inches along its length. We added onto it this full steel basket guard, um, which is actually a HEMA product for single stick uh, or for practicing Scottish broadsword. So you see this is a really great basket hilt just wraps all the way around 180 degrees very very protective but it was made for a, a rattan dowel to fit down in the end of it and then lock into this with a screw so that you could practice single stick or broadsword well my dad and I fell in love with this handguard um, and we wanted to put it we wanted to make a cutlass out of the chaspo so we got a piece of PVC dad actually did this not me dad's the genius here uh, Colonel dad got a piece of PVC that would fit into both of the receiving ends of this and then we filled it we put the Chaspo blade in it and then filled it with two-part epoxy once it dried I used an electric sander to sand grooves into it and essentially shape it like a wooden handle so it actually has curves on the inside for my hand it's got a little curve here that I can fit my finger in and then it's got a swell in the palm I then wrapped that with old leather twine. You can see that leather looks a bit aged. Hopefully you can see that. I think it's pretty charming. It gives me a really good grip. So this thing is very weighted toward the handle. I believe the point of balance is either at the hilt or just past the hilt. There, you can kind of see what I mean. This doesn't want to balance perfectly, but it is definitely point of balance toward the handle, which means that for a cutlass, especially, you know, traditionally cutlasses are pretty blade heavy. Um, this is more of a, a stabbing piercing cutlass. It's extremely lightweight Very very easy to swing around and use But I think you'd want to use it especially since it focuses on so much hand protection with a buckler So now with these two things combined I feel like a pretty well protected little stabby turtle just come out of my shield with my massive amounts of hand protection and deliver great thrusts with the Chaspo blade. I don't know what else to say about it. I'm not a sword fighter. I just make weapons and pretend. Uh, but I do think that if you can get yourselves a Chaspo Yadagon bayonet and you don't mind punching out all the pins, um, you can reconfigure uh, these blades and use them in a variety of ways. This is probably one of the best cutlasses I've ever owned. Um, I haven't used it that much because we just finished it a couple days ago. But every amount that I've played with it has been a lot of fun and I just keep getting more and more attached to it. So I'm gonna sell this on Instagram. I'm probably gonna charge a couple hundred bucks for it, so if you're interested, go check out my Instagram, Eric I. Dean, E-R-I-C-I-D-E-A-N. Special shout out to my mom, wonderful artist, who I told her that I wanted to paint this buckler, 
and so she painted me a beautiful sunny sunflower on it. So now I'm ready to defend the block. That's it, I'm, it's done.